Today I'm going to show you how you can get started with colored pencils on a budget while still using professional supplies. I am only using 12 colors on this piece. So jumping right into the supplies, the first thing we're going to look at is the paper. For this project, I am using the Strathmore Drawing Medium Paper. This is 9 by 12 inches. It comes with 24 sheets. It's only 80 pounds. That's my only real complaint about this. This is the 400 series. It is a very lightweight paper. However, the as far as the tooth of the paper, it's not too smooth, not too rough. I really, really do like this paper for colored pencil. My only complaint is that it's not a heavier weight. So you do need to be careful not to tear it, whether it be when you've got your paper taped down around the edges which you'll see later on how I do that. But yeah, otherwise, it's a great paper. It is archival. So anything that you produce on this, you can sell without worrying about it causing your colored pencils to fade over time or cause issues like that. Next, we have the colored pencils. I am using the basic set of 12 from Faber-Castell Polychromos. All of these colors are light fast and top quality. Now, the polychromous white is pretty translucent, so I like to go with a waxed-based colored pencil for my white. For this project, I've chosen the Derwent Drawing Chinese White Colored Pencil. You could also use a Prismacolor or a Caran d'Ache Luminance White. The Derwent Drawing Chinese White is going to be the most opaque of the bunch, though. For blending, I use odorless mineral spirits. Mona Lisa Odorless and Gamsol are my two personal preferences. You're also going to need something to put your OMS in. For that, I like something that has a rubbery top, which helps to prevent spills. This stuff is super thin and it spills out of everything. So something with that rubbery seal around the edge will help you a lot for that. The last thing that you're going to need is a paintbrush for blending with the OMS. I like Taclon Bristled Filberts for this. You don't need a name brand, but I've been very happy with the Low Cornell and Simply Simmons brushes. Before we get started on this project, if you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where I've got the over two hour version of this lesson available for you now if you wanted to follow along. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my weekly one to two, sometimes longer, hour tutorials. I have over 200 available for you to watch right now and I upload a new one every single week. If you are not sure if Patreon is going to be a fit for you, I do have a free colored pencil demonstration over on my video library if you'd like to head over and take a look at that. I will have links to everything in the video description. I have taped my paper to a wooden board. This is so that I don't indent the paper underneath. Like I said before, this is a very, very thin paper. So if I push very hard on this sheet of paper, I will damage the other paper in that pad. So I like to always remove my paper and tape it to a separate board. And I'm just using masking tape here for this. Now, the really important thing that I want you to see in this project is how I'm able to achieve so many colors from only 12 colors. There aren't that many colors in the set, but it is a really good set for mixing pretty much anything you could want from there. So I just don't want you to feel like you have to buy these full sets of 120 just to get started. Yes, I like having a full set. I think it makes my life a bit easier when I'm not having to spend as much time mixing, but you don't need that to start. And you can mix tons and tons and tons of colors from just that basic set of 12. And you're going to see that as I layer here. So I've started by adding black for my background and before I even blend out I'm taking some magenta and going around the bird's head. That paper that you see me resting my hand on, that is glassine. That's not a must, must have to get started. You just want some kind of paper under your hand so that the oils from your skin are not getting onto your work because the oils from your skin are not archival. So we do want to keep that from happening. While I definitely recommend glassine, being that this is a budget video, I would just take an extra sheet of your paper from the drawing paper and use that under your hand. Something is better than nothing. Now using paper itself, the downside to that is that it can cause a bit of smoke with the artwork underneath if you're not careful. So be aware of that. You don't want it sliding back and forth or anything like that. Now I am using odorless mineral spirits. For this one, I was using Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner. You can also use the Gamsol. They work exactly the same. The Gamsol is supposed to be somewhat less toxic, so there, there is a bonus there. But I'm going over these layers in between. So I'll add a few layers of colored pencil and then go over it with the odorless mineral spirits. Let it dry, add a few more layers, go over it with the odorless mineral spirits. And I'm going to repeat that process until I get the color saturation to be where I want. Now your first few layers when you are blending with OMS 
a mess. It's going to come out looking very grainy, very gritty. It's not, it's not going to look good. The beak, by the way, here, this was done in real time on the live stream. So I'll have a card pop up so you can check that out if you want to see that in, a, it, well, in real time. So going back to just the layering process of this, I will usually add five, three to five layers of colored pencil, of light colored pencil. I do not push hard with my pencils because if you push hard, you damage the tooth of the paper. You do what's called burnishing and it, it makes it so that you're not able to get very many layers on top of that. So while it may be tempting just to push hard and get really rich colors that way, you're not going to be able to layer. We really need to be able to layer in this case in order to get all of these colors from our basic set. And I recommend using the light hand in general anyway. You will get better results in most cases. Usually if I'm going to burnish or push hard with my pencils, I save that for my very last layers. So it's not that you can never push hard with the pencils. I just don't want to do that early on and prevent myself from getting those additional layers I'm going to want later. So for the skin around this guy's face, there is a lot of pink. I don't have a pink pencil. So what I do is first add white and then as I layer the red on top, I'm going to get a pink tone naturally just from those two colors blending together. And I'm doing a lot of the shading here with blues. Now in my reference photo, the blues that I added for shading, those were actually gray on the photo. I like the way the blue came out so much better. And so it's kind of funny having that limited color palette, I got better, I think I got better results than I would have had I used the proper colors. And I found this throughout the entire bird. As I blended those greens, these muted kind of army green in this guy, the colors that I have in green, they're a bright, bright green and, and then almost a lime green. I mean, these are not muted olive green or military green, however you want to call that green. I'm just making up names at this point. But it, I didn't have that color. I had to blend it. And because of that, the end result had so much more depth than had I just chosen the right color green for my base layers. I was surprised at how much I liked this end result. So I'm adding the light green. I've gone over it with some magenta, blended that, that out with odorless mineral spirits. I'm coming back over to the red over his nose or his beak. I guess it's technically both in that area. I've used a lot of yellow and a lot of the orange. I'm not jumping straight into the darker red. I'm going to add that when I need it to be a lot darker. And then I'm going to use that magenta to darken it up even more. Be careful when you're blending things. You don't typically want to jump to, to black to blend everything or to shade everything. Now, in this piece, there were several areas where black was the right choice. But you don't want to depend on that all the time. Try to shade it with magentas or purples. Now this does not come with a, a true purple, but it does have that violet color. If you can shade it with that, you're usually going to get more depth in your work than if you just jump to black for everything. Now, just to be clear, I'm a fan of using black pencils or black paint. I know a lot of artists don't like it. I love the result, but I generally will layer it with other colors and I don't want that to be my default go-to for all, all shadows or your work will tend to come out very flat. So I, every time I blend that out with odorless mineral spirits, I need to let it dry completely before I go on to my next layer. And it dries within five minutes or so, and, and, unless you put the, put the paint thinner on really, really heavy. So on this section, if you look at the finished piece, look at how much how the, the muted tones that I'm going to need in the grain there. What I'm going to do to get those muted tones is going to be a combination, well, pretty much all of the colors. I really layered most of the colors here, but for the most part, remember what your complementary colors are. So if you look at your color wheel, the color across from it, directly across, will be the complementary color. So red and green are complements. You've got yellow and purple, and then blue and orange. If you mix a color with its complementary color, it will neutralize that color. So in this case, my green is just too bright. How can I tone that down? add its complementary color, which is red. So you can, can get these really great muted green tones just by layering reds and greens over each other. I just work back and forth between those until I get the results that I want. And one of the best things, and even if you've got right now, if you're watching this and you've already got tons, you know, the 120 set of pencils or even more, if you've got multiple sets, Challenge yourself to use a limited color palette. You will learn so much more about color blending and layering than by using the full sets because here you're, you have to learn to layer. You have to learn to blend to get the colors that you want. And I think that that's a real challenge for a lot of artists when they're getting started and especially with colored pencil because we do get these full sets with you know, hundreds of pencils. Which color do you choose? And that, you, that can be a hang up for a lot of artists not knowing which color to choose. Limit yourself. That, believe it or not, will make, you, make it much easier as time goes on for you to know which color to choose and to know it's not really a big deal if you choose the wrong color because you've learned here using just 12 pencils that you are just going to layer 
layer until it looks right. Layer on top of layer. One color doesn't give you the right tone, try another one. But there's so many layers in this process that you really can't go wrong. Just choose a color. If you don't like it, choose another color. Here, adding more magenta into the, the really dark shadowed areas. And I will come back through a lot of this with black, but I want to go with the magenta first and then add black where it's needed. I've even added some blue into that kind of bluish green area on, on his cheek there. I'll add yellows to brighten some of this up. Watch how I just keep layering and building to get the color saturation where I want it. What I mentioned earlier about how those first few layers when you blend out with odorless mineral spirits, they tend to look very dull, very grainy. That is totally normal. Usually that's going to happen because you don't have enough pigment, uh, enough of your colored pencil on the paper yet. So if it's super, super grainy gritty, you know you're just not adding enough layers of pencil. Add more layers, more light layers. Don't, don't be tempted to get more on faster by pushing harder. It's not going to give you the effect that you're probably hoping for but lots of light layers in and blend with your odorless mineral spirits here as this starts to dry you'll see it, it has kind of a grainy look not super saturated that means I need more layers it doesn't mean I did anything wrong or that the OMS isn't working right it just means you need more layers and if you didn't add enough layers before you blend it out with the odorless mineral spirits you also did not ruin anything in that case you're just going to let it dry and add more layers Ideally, you want to keep your pencils very, very sharp. This is going to help those pencils, the pigment, to get into the nooks and crannies, the tooth of the paper, which will also help you to avoid a very grainy, gritty look. One of the things that I found to be very interesting in using such a limited color palette is I thought that I'd probably use a lot of brown to tone down my green. And the few areas that I tested with that, I didn't like the results I got. I really liked the results better from mixing the complementary colors, the red or even the violet color into that. I just got such a more rich tone in using those colors versus jumping to brown to neutralize things. Now, as I work, I break things off into small sections. So I'm just focusing on one little area at a time. Once I get my initial layers down, I will blend out with the odorless mineral spirits, let it dry. And while I'm letting that dry, I will usually go back and work on another zone, another little chunk. It makes it much, much easier to tackle than if you're trying to do the entire bird at the same time. So for example, I would not recommend taking your green pencil and putting green everywhere where green is going to go. You're probably not going to end up with very good results at the end. It, it ends up being rushed. It's very hard to focus on the details if you're trying to get something this realistic. Break it up into little chunks, way easier to tackle that way. Now I used my magenta or violet color, whatever we want to call it, because heaven forbid I actually call a pencil by the name the manufacturer does. I never remember them. But I used that violet or magenta color to just block in where all of the feathers were going to go. It's not necessarily that I needed that color to be there. I just didn't want to lose my pencil lines. And I knew as I blended out in these chunks, I would lose the shape of those feathers and have to redraw them in. I wanted to save a bit of time. So by putting that magenta in first, I can just blend the green right on top of it because I was going to mix those two together anyway. And it just saved a bit of time there. So here you can see I had used quite a bit of the green and the yellow, even some orange. While that dries, I'll work on another little zone. Now you don't have to work on a second zone while you're waiting for one area to dry. I just do that to save time. But if it's easier for you to really focus on detail, if you work on one little area start to finish, that is, a, is definitely a good way to go. And we'll blend that out with the odorless mineral spirits. Now, right now, look how it looks almost like a coloring book. It has this very crayon type look. That is normal for your earlier layers. As I continue to build and layer, I'm going to, to start deepening up those values and I will start getting rid of the grainy gritty look that you're seeing here. Gonna go through and add some black. This is one of those cases where I, I know these are gonna be super dark, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into black for the shadows. 
So every time I give you almost, not a rule, but there are, there are exceptions to everything. So where I say, don't jump straight to black, there are times where I'll, I'll think that that may be the better choice. So there's not a one size fit all, this fits all. This is always how you layer. This is always the color you do first, then you do this color. It's going to vary depending on the project. And there are about 20 or more different ways to get to the same end. So don't feel like you have to do it exactly in the order that I'm doing. These are just tips on things that work well for me. Again, here's another layer, very ugly layer. When you're working with colored pencils, you're going to go through some super ugly stages. That is normal. When you hit this stage, don't get into the mindset of there's color, so it's finished. I've got color on the paper. White doesn't show. That part's done. No, keep layering. If, if you're going for something that's very realistic, keep layering until it looks like your reference photo or looks how you wanted it to in the end. Don't call it finished too soon. I would say one of the biggest challenges a lot of people have when they submit stuff for critiques is that they're calling their work finished when it's about a quarter of the way through. It's not that their work is bad, it's that it's not finished. So keep layering. And if you've kept with working with a very light hand, not pushing hard with a pencil, that's going to allow you to continue to add more and more layers. You really limit yourself when you start pushing too hard with a pencil. Now the paper's only going to take so many layers. You will hit a point where you really can't get many more layers on top. One of the things that I like so much about the Polychromos is that they do not have a wax bloom. And I, I used to run into that problem a lot more when I used my Prismacolors. I don't use Prismacolor anymore, but that was the, the pencil that I had used for years before I found other brands. And that one has a real strong wax bloom. So great for blending. You can get really nice blending with it. And if all you have is, is Prismacolor, don't feel like you can't do this project too. You just have to be careful because you, you're going to be a little bit more limited on how many layers you can get because it is so waxy. So just something to be aware of. But I do really like the Polychromos because I'm able to get more layers with these than most other pencils. Same thing, just blocking that in. Very, very messy. And then once that is blocked in, I'll go ahead and blend that with odorless mineral spirits. While that dries, go ahead and work on details around that area. And so as I blend colors, as I've got a green and I realize, wow, that green isn't isn't light enough. I need more more of a bright green. Add some yellow to it. Brighten that up with yellow. Don't always jump to white to brighten your colors up because that's going to give you a more pastel look. Now, sometimes that is definitely the choice to brighten things up. It depends on what look you're going for. But keep in mind, when you add white, you're getting more of a pastel, in this case, blue or a pastel green. If you want it to be a brighter green, try yellow. Same thing with orange. If you want to, or orange or red, if you want to brighten those up, try brightening them up with yellow. In many cases, that'll give you a much better color than just jumping to white, which in that case would give you pink or peach. As I get onto these final layers, I'm really just focusing on my values, getting, making sure that my darks are dark enough, my lights are light enough. If you are drawing something, whether it's paint, colored pencil, any medium, if you have a tendency to come up with something that tends to look very flat, very cartoony, it's usually because your values are incorrect. Yes, you want a solid, stable, you know, an accurate drawing to start with, but even if you have that perfect drawing, if your values are incorrect, it's going to look very, very flat. You want to make sure that your darks are dark enough, your lights are light enough, that is what's going to make your work look more realistic. Here is my finished drawing. As you can see, these colors aren't that close to the colors that came in this set. I had to layer. I had to mix a lot. I will say it took a little bit longer than if I had just grabbed an olive green, but the end result I think looks better, which I wasn't really expecting. That part actually surprised me. I've not done a piece with so few colors before, but the the depth that I got using magenta mixed with the green versus just using an olive green to get about the same color. This, I really, really like the look with, and I cannot say enough about how much it will help you. If you are struggling with color, limit your colors. I know that seems opposite, but if you force yourself to learn and blend and mix colors from a smaller color palette, you're going to learn more and you're going to learn faster and you're going to be that much better when you start introducing a wider color range. Totally not colored pencil but related, but I had to share because there is just something so happy about watching varnish go on a painting. This one is an oil over acrylic painting. I'm using Gambar and this stuff is amazing. Look at how it pulls that color saturation back out. If you work in acrylics and you're feeling that you're, I hear this all the time, people will say that it looks dull. They don't like acrylics because it looks flat and the color looks so matte and not shiny like an oil painting. Yeah, varnish it, it'll fix things. Now this one is an oil over acrylic so it, it would be semi-shiny 
shiny anyway, but look what a difference a high gloss varnish makes. I am such a fan of high gloss varnishes. This one is really great. It dries very, very quickly, and you can actually use Gamvar on top of the oils or acrylics. I've not tried it on a straight acrylic, but I guess technically the background on this is just straight acrylic, but it definitely is my favorite go-to varnish for all of my oil paintings. And you're able, unlike most oil paintings that you're supposed to wait, I think it's six months for the painting to be dry all the way. This you can apply as soon as the painting is dry to the touch, which is a huge, huge deal. If you're somebody who is selling a painting, you don't have to wait forever before you can varnish it and give it to the client. If you are an oil painter, I will put a link to this product in the video description as well. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week.